everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Liar. So the last place we left off, we had just met the king and his son, you know, an audience with the royalty, if you will. So let's see just where this conversation heads towards. I like the king, but his son I'm a little skeptical of. He seems to be brushing me off as if I'm not even there. So, sit back and enjoy, guys, and let's delve right back into this mystical, fantastical journey, shall we? Here we go. All right. Alarm chain, you're up. Let's do it. I had hoped to delay this meeting until Lord Kadaj arrived, but... But we have a kingdom to rule. Raynor has a stern look on his face as he stares his son down from across the table. I have a kingdom to rule. And two other kingdoms to work with. I see it as best to wait until both parties are here before discussing such matters. Adrius grits his teeth for a moment, then reluctantly concedes. Of course, father. I only have our kingdom's best interests at heart. Rainer leans back in his chair with a look of content on his face. Since we are still waiting on our ambassador from Driss, I assume that we could use this time for introductions. He looks at me with a reassuring smirk. I'm still recovering from the random burst of tense energy, so I just nod in agreement. After a few minutes, the doors swing open. Three servers walk in, pushing small carts with food placed on them. Ooh, yummy. They begin to move all the food to the table. There's a large roasted turkey sitting in the center of the table, surrounded by greens and potatoes. They smell delicious, and I can clearly see the steam coming off of them. Grapes of a rich purple color are placed on a plate near the center, and there are bowls of different dressings. A large bowl with a salad is placed on the table. The vegetables are layered perfectly, and it's drizzled in oils and vinegar. There's also a plate of crisp bread rolls. The smell reminds me of the bakeries back home. Finally, a large pot of soup is set next to the table on a rolling cart. The servers start to make our plates. I watch them take a little bit of everything and place it on mine. One of the servers walks forward with a pitcher of wine and fills my cup. After a while, everyone has been served their food. My plate is filled with just about everything. It's a lot of food, and I don't know if I'll be able to eat it all, but I just figure I'll eat as much as I can. Rainer's plate has a big steamed potato and a salad bowl with grapes on the side. Adrius opted for a single bowl of soup. We eat for a bit before Rainer speaks up. So, how are things in Aaron? I haven't been to the Kingdom of Aaron in about ten years. I take a moment to finish chewing the piece of turkey in my mouth. I'm afraid you haven't missed out on much. Aaron hasn't changed, and I don't think it will change for a while. The climate is as favorable as ever, and our citizens continue to thrive. I fear that I'm rambling, but when I make eye contact, I see that he's giving me his full attention and seems interested in the topic. Meanwhile, the prince sits across the table from me, picking away at his soup with a look of an interest on his face. I'm told that Aaron has managed to supply both Driss and, and Lyra with an abundance of food. We are fortunate to have such fertile farming lands and very glad to be able to support our neighboring kingdoms, especially with winter drawing near. Smooth. Rainer takes a sip of wine and leans back in his chair. I agree on that matter. It is very important that we work together. The people of Lyra know better than anyone how harsh winter can be. I'm sure that you do. He gives a slight smile and leans forward, taking a bite from his salad. And we have your people to thank for this food. A nod in agreement, tipping my wine glass in his direction. We continue to eat while having conversations about our common interests. He seems to be very interested in me, which is new because I've never thought I was that interesting. I guess being in this castle all the time would make him want to live vicariously through others. That's a stretch, though, and I might be overanalyzing. The prince has been quiet for most of the time, interjecting with his thoughts occasionally. So, where exactly did you come from, and how did someone like you achieve nobility? He asks this with a look of disdain. I'm starting to dislike him more and more as the night goes on. I lower my glass after taking a drink to pa and pause to swallow. Your Highness, I'm afraid that's not a very interesting story. He doesn't look satisfied with that answer. Lyle told me to get on his good side, but I don't think he has one. He seems to be bitter all around. I suppose... He traces his finger around the rim of his wine glass while resting his chin on his fist. I just worked hard and proved myself useful. Hmm. Speaking of hard work, I have some important news for you, Lord Leuven. I am choosing to appoint you as the Royal Financial Advisor, along with your other duties. Do you think that you'll be up to this challenge? I fold my hands and respond calmly. I have experience with this sort of work back home. It shouldn't prove to be a challenge at all. He looks to be very pleased to hear this. 
That is excellent news. The Winter Solstice Ball will be held a month from now, and we'll need to figure out the expenses. It should be quite exciting for you, considering you've never been to one. The Winter Solstice Ball? Yes. Here in Lyard is one of our most famous celebrations. We celebrate the solstice as a reminder of the death and rebirth of our son. We use this time to cherish our loved ones. That sounds really nice. I'll make sure that everything is in order. Very good. We have past records on hand that you can refer to. I'll have them sent to your apartment in the morning. Our meal goes into the night and soon everyone has finished eating. I can feel a cold draft from the windows behind me and crickets chirping. I didn't eat everything on my plate, but I still feel full. Rainer gets up from his seat and steps forward and steps forward, holding out a hand. I'm taken aback by his gesture, but I reach forward. He takes my hand in both of his and shakes it up and down once with a firm grip. It was a pleasure to meet you, Lord Leuven. I do hope that you enjoy your stay here, however long it may be. Th thank you, your... Rainer. I gather myself and look toward the prince, who is, who is standing across the table. I give a bow in his direction. It was an honor to meet you, your highness. He gives me a slight smile. However, I don't feel that it's authentic. You're too kind. It was nice meeting you, too. One of the servers opens the door and Lyle walks into the room. I wish the both of you a good night. I give a bow in both their directions and then make way to the door. Lyle stands near the doorway as I make my way over. As, in, as I make my way over, he gives me a wink with a soft smile. <laughs> We walk through the doorway and I spot Rainer giving Adrius a despondent look before the door is closed. I assume everything went well? He places his paw on my shoulder with a reassuring smile. Well, I wouldn't say that it went bad. You're looking at the new financial advisor. That's good. <laughs> Not even he knows. Ooh, interesting portrait. I'm about to respond when I spot a painting of Rainer and Adrius. Rainer is looking off in the distance with a solemn look on his face, while Adrius confidently glares forward. I'd say the artist captured them perfectly. I see it as a good opportunity, and I don't think I, sh I don't think it should be too hard. Okay, but how did it go? Dinner with the king? I don't really know how to feel about it. He's certainly a nice person. I can imagine that he's a good king. He's got an understanding head on his shoulders. I agree, he is a great king. He has wisdom and kindness unparalleled with others. The prince, on the other hand? Lyle rolls his eyes at the mention of the prince. He's not the most pleasant person to be around. And he surely doesn't treat me with any respect. Really? We've moved over to one of the windows. He rests his paws on the sill and one of, the, one of his ears twitches slightly. I can feel the cool night breeze blowing through my hair and on my face. I think he's called me by my name once. What does he call you? He sighs, tapping his paws on the bricks. Wolf, dog, and hound. Just to name a few. Well, that makes him ignorant. You're only, you're only one of those things. Yep, 100% pure Lyrian wolfman right here. He bangs his fist on his chest, clattering the metal plate. I laugh and he chuckles to himself timidly. But I don't think he'll be a problem. Aside from being annoying, I'll still clear of him. I'll still, I'll still clear of him either way. We continue to walk, with Lyle in front, leading me through the one through the maze of corridors. I watch the tip of his tail brush the floor from under his cape. We descend a flight of stairs, and our walks and our walk begins to slow. I'm glad that we can enjoy each other's company. He fiddles with one of his gloves, pulling pulling the fourchettes off off of his fingers, then pulling the glove back down on his paw by the trank. It gets very lonely in this castle. It's hard to have friends when you're the captain of the Royal Guard. Things are nice, but I barely have any time to meet new people or go places. He pauses, letting the words hang in the air. I'm sorry if this comes off as a bit odd, considering I met you only yesterday, but I'm looking forward to working with you, Leuven. We arrive at the door to my room, and he stands there waiting for me to say something. I feel the same way. I've only known you for two days, and I already think I know you better than anyone back home. Really? Yeah. Back in Aaron, people only want things from you, and if you don't have what they want, then they don't even give you the light of day. You're the first person who I feel wants to actually be my friend, and isn't just trying to use me. I open the door to my room and step inside. <laughs> Good night, Lyle. 
He looks at me with a soft smile, his eyes reflecting the little light that there is in this darkness. I can hear his tail beating against his cape as it wags back and forth. G Good night, Leuven. He closes the door, and I can hear his heavy footfalls make their way down the hall. I take off my jacket and walk over to my bed, falling onto the mattress. I feel exhausted after everything that happened today. Everything fades out around me as I drift into a deep sleep. Hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's that low rumble. Oh, that's so weird. Oh, Lord, what is happening? I can hear it. It's a rumble. Wake up. They'll be the death of you. Betrayal never comes from your enemies, but from those closest to your heart. If I'm getting the voice wrong, guys, let me know. I don't know what this whisper should sound like. And it always starts with trust. Hmm. Chapter 3. Day six. Already on chapter three. Damn, okay. Oh, beautiful. It's been almost a week since I've woken up. The weather gets colder and colder every day, and I find myself yearning for a warm bath every morning when I wake up. The past couple of days have been pretty relaxing, to say the least. I've had plenty of time to work on preparations for the ball, and I've been taking it at a, I've been taking it at a nice pace. Well, a pace that's nice for me, at least. I, all I really have to do is make sure the resources are readily accessible and calculate the cost of everything. I mean, there's more to it than that, but that's the gist of it. I've been wandering around the castle with Lyle in my free time. Although, I rarely allow myself free time, but every day I do take a break. He's been very good company the past couple days, and he's been showing me around. We haven't gone into the city yet, but I've been able to explore most of the castle. Lyle has managed to cause my inner child to break out as we laugh and joke while walking through the halls. It's funny how he's supposed to be my guard, yet so far he's been my glorified guide. I do appreciate the assurance, though, and having someone there to keep me company should show me around is really nice. It's a good thing that we get along. I'd hate for this whole thing to feel too professional. The other day, he took me up to the tallest tower where you could see the entire city of or see bah, where you could see the entire city in Fjord. His fur was blowing in the wind, and he had that dreamy look in his eyes. I've spoken to Raider a couple times. I'm not too sure how I should feel about him. He's very kind and seems to have his wits about him. There's still something very intimidating about him, though. At the beginning of every interaction with him, I struck things out anxious, but then he manages to completely change the mood of the room. I guess he's just a big, friendly guy. I've run into Adrius a few times during the week. He hasn't really paid me much of mind, aside from the occasional greeting, and honestly, I prefer it that way. With the few interactions that we've had, they had would have been extremely awkward if we didn't talk, and it felt more like an interrogation. He's constantly asking me questions about Aaron. I have a feeling that he doesn't talk with people much. I also feel like the more I avoid him, the better. And then there's Leif. I haven't seen him much. I passed him in the hallway once, and we had a chat that wasn't too interesting. He's probably busy with his own work. Which makes me feel like I've been too relaxed lately. I should probably crack down on my work as well. I get out of the bath and turn off the water. I don't feel as sticky this time since I only used a bit of soap. Walking over to one of the benches, I grab a towel and begin to dry myself off. I run the cloth down my body and between my legs, making sure I get all the water off my body. It's very cold in here, and I know that it's even colder out there. I dress myself and leave through the door. Immediately, the cold hits my face, and I start to speed walk back to the room. It's a crisp, it's a crisp fall afternoon, and the sun is casting a warm hue on the trees below. My footsteps echo down the hall as I get closer to the door to my room. I reach the door, and when, it, when, it, when I open it, I'm blasted with the warm air from my room. Oh, hello there. Hello there, handsome. When I enter the room, Lyle is leaning back in one of the padded chairs, rocking it back on its leg, on its back legs. I close the door behind me and lean against it. <laughs> There's no fire. How's it so warm in here? Well, he leans forward in his chair. The castle is built above a hot spring. It's where we get the water from our plumbing. Get the water for our plumbing, not from our plumbing. <laughs> the water runs through pipes built into the walls, and the heat rises up through the foundation. His demeanor slowly transitions into that of a happy child who is explaining something they're very interested in. It heats up the castle, which can be very nice during the colder seasons. It can be a real pain in the butt during the summer, though. My room, will, my room will sometimes get so hot that I have to sleep with the covers off and the windows open. I bet that's certainly a sight. That's actually really interesting and ingenious. Thanks. 
It's also why there's so many plants growing within the castle. He gestures to all the leaves and vines on the walls. During this time of year, plants like to slowly work their way inside the castle walls, seeking warmth. It's not really a problem for any of us, and Raynor does love his plants. Yeah, I've noticed that. My room alone is decorated with potted flowers, but I've seen way more plants scattered throughout the castle's many corridors and rooms. What about the plants in pots outside? I think those get brought inside once the weather becomes too harsh for them. That makes sense. We stand in silence for a moment before I walk over to my desk and sit down in the plush cushioned seat. I peruse the notes that I've made on some of the arrangements for the food. Everything seems to be in order, so I set it off to the side and grab another document. I have a list of questions and instructions on this parchment for one of the servants to take down to the market. I need to work out the costs of the meat and also need to settle the payments for each butchery that provides. I take this document and set it in one of the trays outside to be collected. If there's nobody there to deliver it, that's usually what I have to do. Someone will come by to pick it up. I sit back down and see Lyle is now standing up from his chair, looking out the window. His tail, which I am now able to see clearly without the bulky cape in the way, in the way wags left and right. He turns to me and shakes his head, smirking. You work too much. I'm sorry, what? I don't think I work enough. How much have you gotten done so far? I've done a lot, but I still have a lot more to do. I mean, I've already finished most of it, and I'm going to be honest with my... And I, with, blah. I mean, I've already finished most of it, if I'm going to be honest with myself. I just wanted to get it done ahead of time. You've spent all morning slaving away at that tiny desk of yours like a workaholic. Then you went to take a bath, and now you're back to work. You really don't need to worry about this. It's not even your primary job while you're here. That doesn't start for a while. He reaches over and swipes my checklist off my desk. Hey! He turns away from me and skims over it with a hurried, with a hurried moment, for a hurried moment. He then turns around with a mocking look on his face. Most of this is already checked off. That's only one of the lists. He swipes the other list gracefully and holds it in front of his face. This one is almost complete, too. He lets go of it, and it floats down and lands on the other list. I look at him with a deadpan. I'm just trying to get it done and out of the way. You're kissing up to the king, Leuven. No, I'm not. I'm just doing my job. He lets out a laugh and throws up his paws in a defensive manner. Relax. I only jest. I roll my eyes and give a defeated yet annoyed chuckle. He runs a paw through his neck fluff as if it were a human's beard. I sometimes forget how similar we are in terms of mannerisms. Well, I'm going to go on a walk. He walks over to the door and looks to me. Lock the door, okay? I really don't think that's necessary. Just do it, please. Fine. He walks to the door and closes it behind him. Not wanting to upset him, I take the key off the desk and lock the door. I grab the checklist and mark off some of the tasks that I did. As I lean against the bed frame and scribble on, on the list, I notice something out of the corner of my eye. There's a piece of parchment on the desk that's been drawn on. I pick it up and examine it. It's a drawing of a flower. It looks like the one on my desk. I assume Lyle drew this, given the sticks the signature. I didn't know he liked to draw. For something that he for something that he most likely scribbled while bored, this is very good. I place the drawing neatly back on the desk and walk over to my bed. I want to get back to work, but that bath made me feel very tired, and all I want to do is sleep. I throw myself onto the mattress and pull the blanket over me, slowly drifting off. Ooh. What do we got? What do we got? It's a voice. The hallway floor feels cold beneath my feet. I'm outside of some room. It, it looks like the entrance to my room, but there's something different about it. It feels like some sort of twisted version of my room. There's no windows in the hallways, and I'm further into the castle. My hands don't feel like my hands, either. I feel like a different person. I try the door, but it's locked. There doesn't seem to be any other doors in sight. With this, I begin to walk down the hall. There are no other doors from what I can see. The corridor just seems to stretch on endlessly. As I walk further and further down the dimly lit hall, I can feel chills running up and down my body. The temperature seems to drop with every step I take. My steps become a bit stumbled as the hallway starts to twist. I regain my balance, but keep pushing forward. Am I going in the wrong direction? Was I maybe supposed to go the other way? I don't really think turning back is the best idea, especially since I've come so far. There is no turning back. Finally, I reach the end of the long and twisted corridor. There's a large archway that leads to a set of spiral stairs. I look behind me and the hall is so twisted that further down the corridor the floor is where the ceiling should be in relation to where I am standing. There's something else. A figure is walking towards me from where I came. They're very far off and I can't make out who they are from this distance. From my perspective, they're upside down. Or are they right side up? 
Either way, I'm curious and don't want to be alone in this odd situation, so I wait for them. After a few seconds, I realize that they aren't getting any closer. It's as if they're walking in place. Their presence starts to unnerve me, so I give up and step through the archway. I take my first step down the stairs, holding onto the banister. As I go on, I start to shake from the cold. My whole body is freezing. After it feels like I've descended about three floors, I come across a figure on the staircase. They're facing away from me with their hands behind their back. I want to move forward and approach the figure, but I'm frozen in place. My body wants to keep going. The figure moves. They begin to walk up the stairs backwards. First one foot, then the next. It's not like they're moving in reverse. The way they're moving looks like they're actually walking up the stairs backwards. I don't really have much time to contemplate this, however, as I find myself stumbling up the stairs. I don't know what is going on, but I have a very bad feeling about this. The figure starts to pick up the pace. Each of their footsteps loosely slap against the slabs of stone. I miss one of the steps on my way up and trip, barely making it far enough to gain distance. I turn around just in time to see the figure bend backwards and loom over me. Oh, God, that was creepy. All right, then. More, and more horror elements. These, these visual novels love their horror elements. All right, guys, that's been another episode of Liar. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next episode. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.